truck drivers? What's a creepy story you've got from the middle of nowhere? Part 2. Unwind and enjoy. If you like what you see, hit subscribe and let your friends know about Thread Tonic. Account 1. Not a truck driver, but I have one weird story from when I was a kid. My parents always took us on long road trips every summer, and my dad liked to take meandering routes through rural towns to see all the tourist traps. One trip, we passed through a little town in Illinois, the kind you miss if you sneeze. This one had mannequins. Every house and business was only populated by mannequins. I don't remember seeing any people. Everything looked maintained and clean, so someone was at least caring for the place. There weren't any signs or anything indicating it was for tourists. Just a convenience store bait shop with a sign reading, Eat here, get worms. Account 2. This reminds me of my hometown, which is coincidentally also a small town in Illinois. About eight years ago, they installed about 20 mannequins throughout our downtown dressed like characters from A Christmas Carol. The mannequins line the street in winter and are supposed to give off a cheery vibe. However, their lackluster artistic stylings, coupled with nearly a decade of neglect, have created essentially a promenade of what looks like burn victims frozen in time with a never-ending expression of horror on their faces. Not many people walk around town in the winter, so the main inhabitants you see are these petrified mannequins with their beady eyes and deteriorating faces. Account 3. I was driving through eastern Washington on some state roads. There were no rest stops or cities, but I had done the route enough to know there were these massive dirt areas every 40 miles where you could park safely away from the road. I decided to call it a night and closed my blinds and lay down to watch something on my phone. After roughly an hour, I heard someone try to open the driver's side door. I hadn't heard any vehicles on the road the whole time I was parked, but I got up to peek out the curtains. As I was looking out into the blackness of the driver's side window, I heard them try the passenger side door. I peeked down from the top of the curtain but couldn't see anything, so I started the truck and turned on the lights. I was fairly freaked out at this point, so I still didn't open the curtains but peeked through gaps. Nothing. Nobody was standing near either of my doors or parked within sight. I took a deep breath and closed the sleeper curtains too because for some reason that was going to make things better, right? After lying back down and convincing myself that something blew against the truck and it only sounded like the doors, it was fairly windy outside and a lot of flat ground, I heard what sounded like someone trying to pry open the vents on the sleeper. The door handles started clicking again and the truck started shifting like someone was climbing on it. I hit the little alarm button in the sleeper, hoping to spook them off, but it did nothing but add to the noise of door handles, fingers tapping on windows and chassis, and the hiss of air coming out of the suspension. Then suddenly it stopped. A few moments where I could only hear myself breathing and my heart pounding before I heard another truck approach and then drive by. I spent the next few hours waiting for whatever it was to come back, but it never did. In the morning, I couldn't find any footprints or damage to my truck, but on every window were tiny human-looking handprints, like a toddler had licked their hand and stuck it to my window over and over. Account 4. Driving through a national park in the middle of the night, going through a slow stretch at about 30 km h, every so often I thought I saw something out the window beside me. Just a glimpse of movement. When I looked, though, I didn't catch it. Finally, on about the third time, I whipped my head around, and this time I recognized it as a huge black wolf following alongside my truck just off the highway. I only saw it for a few seconds before I had to focus back on the road, but it was absolutely lovely, yet unsettling. Account 5. Not long ago, I got lost in a national park that I was visiting for the first time. I was hiking and went too far in. Around 9 p.m., it was an abyss. Thankfully, it was a clear sky and bright full moon, which helped me figure out the landscape. I was using my phone's flashlight and was carrying a DSLR camera with an external flash. The phone died, so I had to use the camera's focus assist beam to light my path and strobe test the flash, hoping a ranger would see it and come pick me up. Anyways, as I was pointing the camera left and right, lighting my path to make sure I didn't step on a snake, all of a sudden... I saw two glowy eyes. I had never seen a wolf's eyes glowing in the dark before, and seeing this for the first time was just a whole new shit-my-pants category for me. 
I froze solid, thinking that this was it for me. Now someone somewhere told me that dogs can smell fear. So if you think and act like an alpha, they won't mess with you. So I thought maybe I should do the same and kept walking. For some reason, the wolf ignored me and I was like, I'm definitely going to run into the pack, but thankfully didn't. Count six. Not exactly creepy, but definitely terrifying. My father was a truck driver and he was driving through a smaller town in Northern California hauling tomatoes. Suddenly he got incredibly tired. Wasn't low on sleep or deprived at all, but ended up passing out at the wheel. The last thing he saw was the light of the town in front of him. He woke up about two hours later on the other side of town, perfectly parked on the side of the road. He swears something was looking out for him that night. Account 7. I used to drive a truck in northern Manitoba. There's a road in the northeast where you can drive for several hours and see very few vehicles. This road is quite flat and straight in stretches. Of course, this is deep in the bush. One day, I saw something cross the road in the distance. Very large, easily past the hood of my truck. But not long like a moose or elk. Just tall. It disappeared into the bush, and as I drove by the spot, the hair on the back of my neck stood up. I heard days later a tow truck driver describing on the radio his encounter with a similar creature. Only he was much more clear he had spotted Bigfoot. This guy went to some length to explain he didn't want people thinking he was crazy. But he was sure of what he saw. I asked an aboriginal client of mine in a nearby community, and he said the elders spoke of them commonly the same way they spoke of the other animals. I don't know what I saw that day, but I'm certain it wasn't a bear, moose, deer, or elk. I just don't know what the hell it was. Account 8. Years ago, I read an answer on a thread about a guy who was riding with his truck driver father as a child. They were in the middle of nowhere and were coming up on a person lying in the road with no one else around, no cars, etc. His dad blew the horn and the person didn't move. He blew it again as he got closer and the person still didn't move. He told his son to put his head down and cover his eyes and he ran the person over. When they looked back, a bunch of people who were previously hiding were running out of the woods. The gist was that his dad knew it was a setup for a robbery or worse and wasn't chancing it with his child in the car. No clue if it was true or not. But I think about that story all the time. Account 9. My uncle was driving between Great Falls and Helena at around 3 a.m. He had his high beams on as it was a lonely drive and quiet highway. In the distance, he saw something cross the median and started to slow his approach, thinking it was a deer. As he got closer, he realized it was standing up, so he slowed down to about 30 mile per mile. He realized what it was and started to panic. A man in blue coveralls with a pig's head. Not a mask, but literally the head of a pig on his shoulder. My uncle moved to the left lane, and as he passed, pig head lunged at the truck. My uncle didn't stop to check if he'd grabbed on until he was in the safety of Helena. Nothing was out of the ordinary there. But on that stretch of road now, he doesn't slow down for anything. Account 10. The obligatory, not a truck driver, but a secondhand story I heard. My great uncle drove big trucks. Living in the middle of nowhere, sometimes people would leave trash on the road. Since he had a big truck, he'd just smash into the boxes or paper and continue on. One day, he was coming up on a cardboard box and had the urge to swerve and miss it. He missed it and passed by with no incident. Then looked in his rearview mirror to see the box. Out popped a kindergarten-aged little kid who just headed back to their house as if nothing happened. Account 11. Not a truck driver, but I've spent the past four years driving every day night for work. I was in a fairly rural part of Mississippi, somewhere between Clarksdale and Greenwood. Important note, it's all two-lane highway for the 250-mile drive home. The weather had turned pretty sour as I was leaving Clarksdale. I called my wife and told her there were high wind advisories and very possible tornado threats throughout the Delta. I said I'd call her as soon as I made it to a safe area again. I had already been working for 14 hours when I got in the truck, so I had eaten dinner and grabbed some coffee to stay awake and alert. Now, if you've never driven through flat farmland at night for 100 miles, it's very fatiguing and spooky without inclement weather. I had driven maybe 30 miles out into the farmland when hail started bouncing off my truck. Being a Mississippi native, I knew in July hail meant tornado. I pulled off to the side. I was in the middle of nowhere, no lights to be seen, no cars behind or in front of me, and started looking for the storm tornado I believed was approaching. I rolled the passenger window down and shined a bright flashlight out into the night. Nothing there. 
I turned to the driver's side and this guy had his face pushed against the glass, grinning from ear to ear. I screamed and he was gone. I slammed the truck in drive and took off. We have running cameras on our trucks. I got to the first safe place to stop and called my wife. I didn't want to scare her, so I didn't mention the guy or the hailstorm. I did, however, pull the SD card and check the cameras. I promise you this guy never popped up on my front or rear cameras. I've always played it off as my imagination. I will say I don't drive through the Delta in the dark anymore if I don't absolutely have to. Account 12. Okay, got one while I was actually driving a bus made out of a truck in the deserts of Central Australia. I was over 500 kilometers from the nearest town, so yeah, middle of nowhere stuff. I was on a five-day charter to pick up a bunch of aboriginal elder women to get their women's business health checks done. Pap smears and mammograms, etc., I believe. On the day I took them to get that done, we went via a place called Mintabi so they could shop in the clothing store that's randomly in this little opal mining area of South Australia. We left from there quite late to make the three-hour journey back to where we were all staying overnight. The next day, I'd take them back to their respective desert communities. The passengers all fell asleep as they'd had a very long day, as had I, but that's my job. Even the nurse who was traveling with us fell asleep. So there I was, all alone in the cab of the Mercedes truck-derived bus, my 30 passengers all sleeping in the darkness of the passenger pod behind the cab, and it was around 9 p.m. Up ahead in the distance, I saw a headlight coming towards me along the lonely desert dirt road. So I dipped my lights so the spotlights went off and adjusted to see only what low beam would show me. I drove down into a slight dip of a dry creek bed, expecting to see the car with only one headlight anytime shortly. It's not unusual to see a car with only one headlight out there, so I wasn't remotely bothered. As I came out of the dip, I put my spotlights and high beams back on, and there was no car, no nothing, just the empty dirt road. There was no dust in the air, and I could see a good distance in front of me and out to each side. There was nothing there, just the empty desert, the dirt road, and me alone in the cab. I kept the lights all on until we came to a stop about an hour later. I didn't see any cars or anything the rest of the journey. Before I let the passengers out, I asked if any of them saw the light, and they all went dead silent. After a short while, they started talking in their own language, Pitjantjat Jara and Yankunitjat Jara, hurriedly, and then they all got off the bus. A few minutes later, a couple of the ladies came up to me to ask me to tell them exactly what I saw without leaving anything out, and to describe exactly where I saw it. Now, I'm a big guy. I've lived on three continents. I've been a police officer, a teacher, a bus and coach driver, truck driver, all sorts of things. Let's just say I'm pretty skeptical, but I do have an open mind. I'm not scared by much in this world. After I told these ladies everything from start to finish and described in minute detail exactly where it happened, I took note of exactly how far out we were when it happened, the two ladies looked at me with the whites showing in their eyes. They looked spooked and said, and I'll never forget the way they said it. I got on great with the indigenous people of Central Australia, and I trust that I know when something rattles them. They said this, Driver, we are so lucky that you did not stop, because if you did, no one would have seen any of us ever again. We'd all be gone. I asked why, and they just shook their heads and said not to talk about it because it had scared all the ladies. I'm sure many people have heard about the Min Min lights in western Queensland, but whatever these ladies knew about whatever I saw in our location, they were convinced it wasn't something you wanted to meet in the desert at night. I only ever saw this once. I only saw it for maybe a minute, and it just looked like a car headlight a couple of kilometers away up the road. But I'll tell you what, if the ladies that come from this area and whose people have survived in this desolate, remote part of the continent for 60,000 years are worried to the point of all being scared, I certainly don't want to mess with whatever it is. Account 13. I've seen some rather screwed up stuff over the years, from bad wrecks, drug addicts, panhandlers, and more. There used to be a small rest area in North Dakota on US-52, at the intersection of ND-30 near Sykeston. I came out of the building after using the facilities and got ready to leave. As I was starting to pull out, a guy opened his car door. The angle was just right to see that he was buck naked. Then he got out of his car and started walking around it. I'm not sure if he was a druggie or just thought, 
This is a good way to pick up a truck driver I've never met before. I just drove away and didn't look back. Maybe that isn't creepy in the sense that OP meant it, but I thought it was. One story that was creepy to me was when I was driving across Kansas on I-70 headed west. There is a pretty long stretch out there with just a couple of little towns and not much else. As the night wore on, I realized I had been passed several times by this beat-up old motorhome. Several people sat with their noses almost pressed to the window, watching me with creepy interest as they passed. Every time. I never noticed where I repassed them. A couple of times, I swear they passed me twice where there were no rest areas or exits to pull off at. I would have seen them stopped somewhere, but yet, here they were passing me again. They all looked like some variant of Charles Manson or another freaky type. I was pretty uptight by the time I got to the TA truck stop in Lyman and stopped for the night. Almost every driver I know has seen stuff late at night that just can't be explained. Maybe it's fatigue, or maybe not. But I've seen very large, man-like shadows cross the road way too fast for their size several times. I'm not saying it's a Bigfoot. I never got a clear view. It was always out at the end of the headlights, where I couldn't be entirely sure I even saw anything but it sure looked like a large something crossing a whole road in just a couple of steps. Weird. Account 14. I live in Kansas and have driven that western stretch many times on my way to Colorado. It's absolutely nothing for so long, and the few tiny towns you do pass are mostly run-down nothings as well. I've never had to drive it in the dark, but I would easily get spooked. And for whatever reason, we seem to have a lot of people in this state who like to mess with you late at night on the interstate if you're the only two cars around. Three significant times, I remember one of those assholes would pass me, slow down in front of me until I had to pass them, then speed back up, stay beside me for too long, and then get back in front of me and repeat until we came across another car. They'd start it on them while I'd fly forward to get away, I had someone once follow me into the toll line, after doing what I just described for a half hour or so, when several other lanes were open and empty. I had a K-tag, and the worker waved me through. But I stopped and told her the vehicle behind me had been following me for miles, how they were passing and slowing down, and now followed me into this lane. She told me they didn't have a K-tag, so she would make sure to take her time in getting their money to give me time to get ahead. Well, they then backed up and went into another lane. She told me to sit and wait for them to drive on, turned on the red X so no other cars would come behind me. That other car waited about two minutes, just sitting there. The lady called the other worker in the stand and told them to get them out because they had been following me and were being really sketchy. They finally pulled off slowly and drove slowly down the highway. I sat at her toll for about five more minutes, got off on the very first exit, and went through town to get to a road that led to my home a few miles outside of town because I was afraid that car might have pulled over on the highway ahead to wait for me. This was around two in the morning. Fuck people who do that shit. It's extremely creepy and unsettling. Account 15. Driving home through what could be considered the outskirts of town, a young woman ran through the street waving at me and yelling something. She was wearing nothing but a t-shirt and panties. There are a lot of homeless people in that area and a lot of meth in my town, so I just kept going. It's fairly common for women to flag a car down and distract the driver while a bunch of guys scramble out of the bushes to mess you up and take your car. About a mile down the road, I realized she didn't really look homeless. I felt guilty for not stopping, and the ethical thing to do was risk the carjacking for the possibility the woman was in danger. Shitty people shouldn't turn everyone else into shitty people with fear. The woman was gone. I only passed one car when I flipped around. A blue 99 Toyota. There are no stores or houses, just sand, dirt, rocks, and brush. Later that night, it occurred to me that she might have been running from the man in the blue Toyota. I hope she was a carjacker.